News First, Newsline. Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Newsline Live. We're starting off a little bit late, of course, uh, because of the World Cup qualifiers, uh, but getting right into it. Um, we've got a guest who used to feature quite uh, often on Newsline, but um, took a bit of a, uh, a political moratorium, if I will, uh, if, if I may say. Uh, uh, but here he is today, a former minister, Faiza Mustafa. A very good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Nice to have you back after quite a long time. It's nice to be back as well. So, uh, Mr. Faiza Mustafa, former minister, former minister of local government, former minister of sports, uh, also senior vice president at the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. What happened? What do you mean, what happened? We've not seen you for so long. You've, you've been out of the political spectrum in the country. And at a time when the country, uh, you know, is, is really suffering politically, political turmoil. Why didn't I you... I was in parliament for 16 years, but you know, this parliament, I'm not there. Hmm. So, life goes on. <laughs> so, now, well, you're back. Um, but you've resigned from the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. I, I, uh, I tendered my resignation okay. from all posts, posts in the Sri Lankan Freedom Party, but the political leadership hasn't accepted this as yet. Hmm. So does that mean you, you're still a part of the Sri Lanka no, Freedom I'm not. Party? Do you... No, I'm, I'm what you call Nirpakshikai. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not in any political party at this point of time. So, um, former Minister Faisal Mustafa, a lot is, is going on in Sri Lanka, of course, as you would know. Um, we've got a parliament that has lost the mandate of the people, a president who was not elected but selected by parliament, a president deposed. Um, since this is the first time we're having you on our show after quite a long time, I would like to ask you, um, where do you think we're headed right now? I think we had a president who thought he knew it all and brought this country into absolute chaos. Hmm. And the people of this country spoke and they got rid of him. Mm. And now, President Rani Vikram Singh has taken over the reins. I mean, from what it was, we had no gas, we had no electricity, there were queues, mm. the dollar crisis, the country was in absolute chaos. Mm. But I think the present president has brought stability to this country. Mm. And I think for once the people recognize that you need a man with brains in that seat. Mm. That's my belief. So, by the sounds of it, uh, you seem to be supporting the current president and his uh, No, I'm not, I'm not in his political party, hmm. but at this point of time, I don't think we should look at things politically. Hmm. And what is politically right, I think when a country, when the country has gone through such a situation, hmm. where the economy was in such turmoil, hmm. and we were in dire straits, hmm. and we should all get together irrespective of our political differences, hmm. and see how we could fix the country together. Hmm. And that's what I believe in, and that's what I think we all should do. Well, as, as far as, you know, Sri Lanka coming up economically, people do understand that um, there are hard times ahead. And um, you can see certain people have, have gotten behind certain policies, unpopular policies of the government, um, even though there was an initial opposition uh, to these policies. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Faisal Mustafa, since you're an attorney as well, let's get into the enforcement of the law, per se. Now, there have been calls, <clears throat> even during the time of the Aragale, for the law to be enforced equally, justly. Rule of law, same law governing everyone. But why is it so hard to do? Why are certain people still getting preferential treatment? And why are certain people still being targeted for the opinions that they hold? I think political victimization is one. Hmm. And I think uh, <coughs> political interference is another. Hmm. So the rule of law should apply to everybody equally. Mm. During the former president's time, mm. hate speech was operative only against certain communities. Mm. So I think we should move from that direction. And the law should be enforced against us. That's something which this government should do. Mm. And I believe that selectively enforcing the law with regard to certain persons mm. or certain communities should never happen for this country to prosper. So when you say that's something that the government should do, isn't it the duty of law enforcement authorities to really enforce the law? Unfortunately, <coughs> to take a dynamics here, say our police hmm. is under a minister. Hmm. So if you look at it, not now, it has been continuously so. Hmm. So the political leadership at various times, there have been interferences. Hmm. And we don't, we don't have an independent public service. The public service, there is interference. 
If you look at India, their success is they are very independent public service. Here, the public service sometimes bend backward towards politicians. Hmm. The police in the same manner. So unless we move away from that, we'll never, we are never going to have equality in any form. Hmm. And that's what I think all should work to achieve. We have political victimization from the time of independence. Hmm. When governments change, it has happened. <coughs> and selective enforcement of the law has also continuously happened. It's hmm. something which is not which we, which we, which uh, which happened only recently. Hmm. So, <clears throat> initially, with what you said, what I gathered was uh, that um, you are content with the direction that this government is going in. No, I think there's an obligation of the <coughs> government to hold the election as soon as possible hmm. as part of the franchise. But also, there are economic concerns, and the government hmm. has expressed that. There is a question with regard to funding, hmm. but I think it's a fundamental right and also when you're dealing with the franchise, so there's an obligation cast upon the governor as soon as possible to hold the election. But um, for Minister Faisal Mustafa, some might find issue with you making that statement because it was under your stewardship that the provincial council election was postponed and that initial postponement has not ended yet. Unfortunately, the truth, very few people know. During my tenure, I brought in 25% female representation. I got rid of <coughs> the preference vote. We brought in a new system. Okay. And doing that took some time. Hmm. And also with regard to delimitation, there was no agreement in parliament. Hmm. There, there is a myth, right, that I voted against my own bill. It was not so. You did? There, it didn't. It was a delimita independent delimitation report, hmm. which every member of parliament was entitled to express their view, whether they accept it or not. Hmm. But unfortunately, there are certain persons try to construe that it's a bill that I voted against. Tamange That's a general saying. But so, so are you saying that are you saying that you didn't vote against that I, no, report in Parliament? That was there was an independent body hmm. which brought in a report. Okay. And every member of Parliament, as a member of Parliament, was entitled to support or post that report. That was an independent committee. That had nothing to do with me. So you, you opposed it? I opposed it. And they said, I opposed the bill. That was that is not so. Hmm. So you, you, had, you had no hand in, in, in this committee, either appointing no, the committee? I, I, I didn't, no, I didn't have any hand. The committee no. was appointed? The committee by? was appointed by the president. Not by the by president? Me. Yeah. So, so you had literally no role in it? I had no role. You no just role. brought it to parliament? And that's that's just, it. Just I, I presented it, it to parliament and then I had the right of opposing it or supporting it. Uh, but e either, either way, um, uh, Mr. Mustafa, now elections are, are almost like a dream. I think uh, there's a common saying that, uh, you know, you know the real value of something once you've lost it. And uh, people here in Sri Lanka have lost their franchise and they're really starting to understand the value of the elections that we once took for granted in this democratic country. Uh, we don't know when the next election is going to be held. Uh, but of course, uh, I you... think people had the dream when they voted for Gotabe Rajapaksa as well. Right. When you say dream, what do you mean? What the dream of a better nation. What did they expect? Hmm. What happened? Okay. So at this point of time, hmm. elections are required. It's hmm. part of the franchise. But let us get together and fix the economy as well. Hmm. That I mean, the government trajectory hmm. should be, and the trajectory of every person should be, is seeing that I that. We as a country, mm. and there should be poverty elevation, mm. because you know, when there were queues, people didn't have electricity, electricity gas, mm. and there were no medicine. Mm. What that era, there were power, 10, 12 hour power cuts, mm. and we have to move away <laughs> from that era. But I am not justifying postponement of the election, postponement of the elections in any form. Mm. There is an obligation on the government to hold the election. So, uh, Mr. Mustafa, I'm, I'm extremely curious. Now, you were once the Minister of Public Administration and Local Government. Local uh, Government. Local Government, sorry. Uh, so, uh, although limited in a way, because the Election Commission really handles the entire election, um, you would have had some interaction with holding elections. I did, uh, I did. And, um, well, at least funding the yeah. election. So, the argument now is that the government does not have money to hold the election. Uh, but I must tell you, from a reasonable pers person's perspective, when you look at the things that are happening in the country right now, one could sit and wonder, does the government really not have money to hold the election? What is your take on this? Is this the absolute truth, that the government just doesn't have enough money to hold an election? I mean, 
I can't speak on behalf of the government. I'm not part of it. No, but, but, but your but, independent but view as a, as, my, as as a citizen. My independent view is, as a citizen, if the government states that there's a difficulty in raising money for the election, mm. they should as soon as possible do so. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to say no. But at the, me at the same time, mm. the government trajectory should be to, to steer the economy because the former president, mm. you know what he brought our economy to. Mm. So we have... From the time of independence, hmm. our economy was never in this situation. We never had a prob had a problem of waiting 10, 12 hours to get elect uh, to, to get fuel, hmm. and we never had power cuts for so many hours, hmm. and we had never no problem where where, where we didn't have medicine. Hmm. So, so the dark era from the time of independence hmm. was under the former president. Hmm. I'm not trying to justify anything. Hmm. So, well, although it was under the former president, you at the time were part of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. I was, pa I was part of the Sri Lankan party and our and party, su and our party, party supported, supported him as well at the presidential. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. Today, you can't find a person who voted for him. Did you vote for him? <laughs> Obviously, my party supported him, <laughs> I did. But today, you ask 9 out of 10, everybody says, we never voted for him. <laughs> but then he couldn't have got that mandate. But it's unfortunate that people assessed him wrong. Hmm. But, uh, uh, but all those uh, conversations aside, what, what happened is really a lesson for all of us um, on how policies and, and um, looking forward and, and not being very short-sighted uh, is important for a country. But uh, Mr. Faisal Mustafa, do you think that we've really learned from our mistakes? Now, we're speaking about policies, solid economic policies that will not turn, flip and twist with the change of government. But... My question to you is, how can a parliament that has lost its mandate, a president who has not been elected by the people, set the groundwork or set the direction for these solid policies that Sri Lanka needs right now? There is a constitutional process. There is a parliament. Hmm. There is a president who has been elected by the members hmm. of parliament because the former president resigned. Hmm. So, Parliament as a whole has an obligation mm. until the next election to try to fix things. Okay. President, elected or voted or whatever, he's the present president at this point of time. Okay. So, I mean, all of us, politicians, civil society, should all get together and help to steer the economy. Because if you look at what our country was, there's mm. no point. Everybody can preach. Mm. But the common man is suffering and also... Earlier, we, the voter wanted somebody who carry children, who pat a man on his back. But today we have a president. He may be not the most popular person, mm. but he has proved to this country mm. that he can steer this country from the dark era it was. I don't think any other president mm. could have steered this country during, after the ruination of what uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksa did mm. to this situation. I'm saying it with, I mean, I, I mean and he's not the most popular person either. Hmm. So I, I believe that the next until the next election, hmm. all of us, irrespective of party politics, I mean not support the president, but support the country hmm. and steer the country to this dark era. Hmm. Um, so there is a kind of a statement that came in, um, but it's only for questions. Uh, so let's put yes, this yeah, to our guest in the form of a question. Uh, so it says, uh, when we had shortages, we were paying our debts. Now we are not paying our debts. I believe... Uh, the viewer is trying to uh, intimate to you the fact that uh, although you say that the economy is on a right course right now, um, that is just because we're not paying our debts. So the rupee is appreciating, everything is hunky-dory until the debt restructuring is done. So somebody decided, the president decided we are incapable of paying our debts now. Uh, the earlier president didn't think so, his advisors didn't think so. So at this point of time, if we paid our debts, our crisis would have got worse. So now we have to collectively take a decision that we have to pay our debts. Now, some, some, okay, only he, the only reason the country is doing well because he, we didn't, we, we are not paying our debts. I mean, it's a very short-sighted approach because mm. it is an economic decision mm. consulting the governor, consulting mm. the experts at this point of time. Mm. If we pay our debts, where would we be? Where would we be? Mm. So I mean. That is a decision taken. So somebody saying that we are in this situation because we did not, we are not paying it. That's true. But somebody took that decision. Or did the former president or his advisors take that decision? Mm -hmm. So maybe from now to move to move on, we have to we have to take certain decisions. So, but Mr. Faisal Mustafa, you really didn't answer my question. Do you think that this president and this government?
can set in motion solid policies that will not change once the next government comes into power? I mean, every government <coughs> has not had consistent policy. I hope so. I'm not, I, I, I <laughs> genuinely hope that there will be consistent policies. No, are, but do you, but, think, but, do you but, think that they can? Do you think that they can so do it without I mean, you, the support of the people? So he, the, he, we have elected 225 members to represent us. Hmm. We have elected the president to resign and now we have a president selected by parliament. Hmm. So we have, they have a responsibility to have consistent policies. Hmm. I mean, people are handed it over to parliament and parliament has to, to act. Hmm. Every man can't shout on the streets hmm. and make demands or try, or they can't put our country right. I mean, there is a, there is a way of doing things. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Faisal Mustafa, we're in the final few minutes of the show. One final question. Do you think that postponing the provincial council elections was a mistake on your part? On the I, part never, the... I never postponed any election. <laughs> I followed the due process. The, the, the provincial council election, it, at the stage it was with the prime minister to hand mm. over the report to the president. And that's why <laughs> the election got postponed. Mm. The, the, the Prime Minister at that time had to hand over the review report to the President. Hmm. But unfortunately, because of the Minister, I, everybody seems to point fingers at me. <laughs> but I, I mean, nobody knows the true facts and it's very unfortunate. Hmm. But elections haven't been held for so long. So you should blame the former go government and also hmm. this government. Provincial Council elections can be held. I, I say people have the right to have elections. And every government has an obligation in term, terms of the constitution to hold elections. So I'll just try to scooch in one more question. Um, now, they're planning on bringing in an amendment to the local government election uh, process as well, reduce the number of, uh, uh, reduce the number of representatives. Um, do you think this is another ploy to postpone that election? No, I, don't, well? I, I hope not. I'm not a member of, if it is a ploy, it's bad. But, but I, based on your political but achievement, I, I, what do you think? Uh, there is a 25% <coughs> female representation. Even if our numbers are high, hmm. I appeal to the government not to, to make any changes with regard to female representation because we need, we have a 52% female population in this country hmm. and we need to bring women into the political arena hmm. for the greater good of this nation. Because you're, you've always been a supporter of female representation. Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've been a catalyst with regard mm. to female representation. It was during my tenure that we brought in the 25% quota for mm. local government and for provincial council elections because mm. we have less than 5% in local level mm. and, uh, and, and, in, and in parliament as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Faisal Mustafa, former minister, of course, uh, for joining us on our program. After an extremely long time, Thank you. Uh, we would like to have you back, of course, uh, once uh, the the situation in the country, of course, progresses to the better. You were hopeful about it. Uh, thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in. Um, once again, just like Faisal Mustafa said, uh, we hope and pray that elections will come soon and the people will be able to express their views and elect their leaders. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. God bless.